Welcome to Electric Rain. I'm Julie Haymaker and I'm going to be your artistic guide through this online class. The first thing I'm going to do is go through the supply list. This is your kit over here. It comes with a pair of gloves. It's going to have the, the silk cord, the leather cord, and the wax linen for stringing. It's going to have pre-cuts enough to do two pendants and it's going to have the bag of beads. And there's extra beads in that. It also comes with the template. The template is if you want to make future pieces beyond the, the ones in your kit, the pre-cuts in your kit. So you need three pieces of shrink plastic to do a pendant. This is the three that you need to do the smaller three petal pendant and this is the template you need to do the larger three petal pendant. Then on to the supplies you need to provide. A heat gun, the shrink is large domed bead, that's the mold making bead, that's the ivory plaster one. And this enables you to make a large bead that wraps a large bead, a large trinket bead that wraps a large um, bead. Then you're going to need the silicone fluted spacer bead mold. And I always have a little box. This is a jewelry lid box for shrinking the smaller flat pieces. An eraser to erase any pencil lines. I like super new glue. I sell this on my site. Um, but your favorite jewelry glue for not sealing and adding the terminator tips would be fine. You can use E6002. Pliers for opening and closing jump rings. And then a selection of colored pencils in bright colors that will coordinate with the beads that are in your kit. So a section of nice bright pastels. I like Prismacolor pencils and I included a black and a white one in that. Then I also am taking you through how I used markers on mine. I use um, art markers. My favorite brand is Spectrum Noir and I have those in brights and in pastels set. I rarely, if ever, use Sharpie markers. I also have some, this is Concept Brand. I believe I bought these at Jerry's Artorama. They were open shelf. And then I have the Tombos because they have nice little tips if I want to do detailed lines. I also, these are optional. These are two brands that do the same thing. Krylon makes a glitter shimmer, and it comes in silver, gold, and opal, which is like an iridescent. And then Glitter Dust is another brand. It comes in iridescent, silver, and gold. And I'm going to show you. I'll be using the Glitter Dust. I will be. You can buy these online. I will be showing you how to add iridescent uh, to your beads with this. But this is optional. You don't have to have that. It's just going to be an optional thing. And then another option is I'm going to be showing you how to edge your bead using paint, oil-based paint markers. The brand I use is Deco Color, and I carry really nice color selection on my site. It gives you an alternative to, to edging the beads. When I say edging the beads, the lines right here. It gives you another alternative besides using markers. I think you might have seen on my site how I'll use um, Sharpie markers for that and also gold leafing markers. But these are oil-based oil paints, so it's a real nice, strong, beautiful, clear color. So I'm going to show you how to do those. Then a pair of scissors for clipping the string. I think that should cover it. Let's move on to the next step. Thank you. 
So we're going to start by coloring the shrink plastic pre-cut sheets and I'm going to be using a combination of markers on this, nice um, art markers, not sharpies, and a combination of the bright pastels and then I'm going to combine them with colored pencils. Now you can use one or the other, a combination of both, or you can use your you know, stamps or inks or alcohol inks on this. You can do anything you want, but I'm going to be demoing the beads with this combo. And when I use markers, I always use bright pastels. I don't use heavy dark colors. I don't like the buildup of pigment, and remember that your color intensifies 50% when it shrinks down. So the bright pastels um, just work well for me. And any overall pattern is wonderful on these designs. These are um, bright, whimsical pieces that I'm demonstrating, but you can just, by altering your color and your choice of patterns, you can create very sophisticated pieces with, with this. So just a nice combination of the two. I'm going to sharpen my black. So we all have an enter pattern um, that we just naturally like to use. And on this one I'm using um, stripes and dots. And I'm keeping in mind the colors that are in my kit, which is easy because they're just, you know, bright, bright colors and they'll work with whatever I choose. Now I'm going to come in with a border. I like to border my pieces sometimes, and sometimes I don't, but on this one, I'm going to border them by burnishing a wide edge on my colored pencil. I'm coming in here. bordering it. If I border it, 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 it creates a more, um, it contains the dot design and creates a stronger statement with your piece. And if I don't border, border it, the piece becomes a little bit more lighthearted and um, just, it can still remain whimsical but in a, in a lighter way. Bordering just makes a strong decorative statement. It's like adding a frame to a painting or choosing to mount it at all uh, on the wall frameless. It, it makes a strong statement either way, but it does make a statement. So if you want to give this a soft edge, you can come in and rub with your fingers to smear that. And there we have our first big piece done. 
flip this over and come in. Things are flying all around. Here is my uh, the two pieces that I'm going to use in the uh, with the fluted spacer bead mold. So I'm going to continue with that um, marker and colored pencil look. Um, yeah, nice green. It's always challenging put, putting caps on. I must. There. Don't get the cap on right, your marker's going to dry out. Whoops, what am I doing here? Tearing the whole thing apart. Combining the markers and the pencils is just, to me, a really fun look. Okay, so that this coordinates, I'm burnishing my black again, and I'm going to give this a border too, so that these two pieces coordinate well. Smearing. And then for the flower drop, the leaf droplet that will land at the bottom of this, I'm going to show you on both these. I'm going to use a, a polka dot pattern, and I'm going to show you how I create nice polka dots. So first, I do the dots. And I'm doing this strictly with colored pencils. And then I come around here and I circle the, 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 the dots. And this is creating kind of a border so that when I fill in the background color with the blue, I stay in the lines and don't um, go over and create green. Yellow and blue make green. That just helps me keep it contained. There we go, and to tie this one in, I am going to outline it. And for this kit, you get to make two pendants. So there's our first set. I'm going to flip this over and start the smaller second set. And I'm going to be doing those with the, the, the markers and the pencils again. And I'm selecting a marker color to come in here.
colors do I have? Here. Now I have to decide if I would like to outline this or not. I do have pencil line from drawing the template, placing it on the shrink plastic and pencil line. So if I'm not going to outline it, I really need to erase that pencil line. So I'm going to get an eraser out and do that. And then I can assess it and say, do I want to leave no outline on that? So you have two ways of getting your pencil line off. Um, since I was making this decision as, you know, as I designed, I'm erasing it now, but I could have erased it before. Going it off. Um, I think that I'm going to leave this without a pencil line on it, without the outline, because the previous one I did with an outline. So so with this piece, since I'm making that decision and these go together, I will erase this before. Sorry if that's jiggling the camera. So if you don't want a pencil line border, Go ahead and erase that because it will show up. I'm a person that absolutely loves patterns and I don't like to think as I put them down so much I just like them to kind of develop as I go along and I like I'm very very organic now you can hardly see this on here it's white and so it'll be a white on white, but the shrink plastic transparent areas will shrink down to be kind of a grayish white. And then the pencil line dots that I'm putting on here will become very opaque.
Let's see, is that all the farther I'm going to go with that? I think so. And now for my little um, drop at the bottom. I think that I will go back to markers with that. That's a bit strong. That's a bit... Oh, but I'm going to use it anyhow because it's going to be much lighter. Look at that pretty color it is on the shrink plastic. So this is a good way to use your extra shrink plastic to use as um, samples of how colors look. Because you see the huge difference between an absorbent surface and a non-absorbent surface. Now I'm going to show you something really different on this little piece as far as how you can border something. It doesn't have to be a line. It's bordered, but it's not bordered, and it ties in with the dots there. Now, I have done these with marker, but I think I'm going to go back over them and reinforce them with pencil so that they, the two s tie in together. So we have these two looks. I'm going to come in with some blue here to tie it in, making sure everything coordinates. And there I am with my coloring. Now I want to show you one more technique. I'm going to do it on these two. This is Krylon's Glitter Shimmer. It's not their Glitter Blast, it's their Glitter Shimmer, and it comes in an iridescent and a Shimmer Silver and a Shimmer Gold. If you can't find it in Krylon brand because it's getting harder and harder to find, and you don't want to use their Krylon Blast because that'll just put too much glitter on it, this is called Glitter Dust. And it's the same thing, it's just a different manufacturer. And um, this is the iridescent. So I'm going to be using the iridescent. I could have used the silver, but I, the iridescent is my favorite. So I'm going to shake this up. And I want you to give it a squirt, and I want you to hold it 12 inches away from your piece. So 12 inches, that's 11. This is 12 inches. So too close will, and, and spraying too long will have it pool up and gum up. You just want a light shimmer on this. And I'm going to spray in here. I'm a little nervous that it's going to get on the camera lens, but I'm just going to do it anyway so that you guys can see what I'm doing. So nice shaking it up. And then I'm 12 inches away, and I'm going to just spray it like that. Did you see how I just misted each large piece? And I'm setting it aside to dry. I'm going to try to bring it up so that you there, so you can see how much I have on there. You don't want too much. That's your worst thing. Less is better than more. 12 inches away. And on that smaller piece, I hardly shot it at all. But I've got enough on it because this will double up when it shrunk down. Okay, I'm going to let those dry and then the next step we're going to be shrinking. 
So the first two we're going to shrink down, we're going to be using the uh, fluted spacer bead mold, and it does not matter what side you put down on this. So place it on your mold, Think about an inch away, how it wiggles and shrivels. Let it flatten back out, stop moving on its own accord, and then come on down with your mold and hold it for the account of five. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. And we have our first darling little piece done. We're going to do the second one doesn't matter if you put it this way or this way because both sides are the same on the fruited spacer bead mold. Stop the wiggling and should we stop wiggling. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. And this is the one that I put the sparkle on. There's the shiny side, and that's really pretty. And there's the glistening, sparkly side. Next, we're going to use the plaster bead. This is the large dome mold, so put your pin in the mold and place your mold down on the pin. We're going to put our gloves on. After we select a bead that we want in the center of this. Better get my little tray out and pour my beads out all my bead selections. So I've got three big beads here that I can pick. And I think I'm going to pick the orange one. Okay, so this is a side that I sprayed with the glitter. So I'm going to place that down in the mold because I want to see it on the outside. This is going to there's a little jump ring that got caught on there. This is going to be replace my doming pin. I'm going to put my gloves on because we're going to be hand forming. So I have this ready to go. And I can use my stick, my paddle pop stick or whatever to that comes with your mold to hold it in, from falling off because it's a big piece. And this one takes a little longer to shrink because it's large. So get it going. Try to keep it evenly going as best you can. Let those guys unfurl on their own. There, I'm not worried about coming off the mold anymore. So I'm coming in here, shrinking it all down. Keeping it evenly warm now. Notice how I move my heat gun around to keep it evenly warm and make sure everything shrunk stops moving and wiggling on its own accord. Even if it doesn't flatten out, I know that these guys have shrunk down. I'm just looking to make sure that they're not shrinking anymore. Keeping it nice and warm. I'm dropping my bead down on it, pressing down and coming up around here and holding and counting.
1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. Got a little bit of the plaster dust on that. No worries. When your plaster, if your plaster mold is brand new, it will uh, see the dust. It's just, you can just wipe it off or use a, a a wet towel, a little wet rag, wipe it off. Let's see how beautiful the, glib the glitter is on that. Okay, we're going to do number two. And this one here, I'm going to put the shiny side down in the mold. I didn't spray it. And I can use either the blue one or the black one. I think I'm going to choose the blue one because the reason I'm going to choose it because I think when these shrink I'm hoping they come up a little bit over it so I can show you how to bring the petals up. Back with my gloves. And this one will shrink faster than the other one because it's not as big. But we're still going to watch kind of individually heat, yet try to keep all the heat at, on, the, on the piece at the same time. So that's a trick. Individually heat while keeping everything we want. Kind of like planning a meal where things cook faster than others and you've got to keep them warm while the other things are cooking without drying out or cooling down. So here we've got that one went a lot faster and I'm making sure that all of my pieces are shrunk down and that it's warm. And I'm going to drop that bead on it and I'm going to bring my little petals up and they did not fold over but if they had if I'd used a really small bead then I would bring the petals the petals would go up beyond this and then you just form them as you desire but with the bigger beads you see that's how you enclose a bead there's there you can see that that one right there this petal just the way it is is a little bit extended now I could reheat that and press that on down or I can leave it. There we go. So cute. Now we're going to, I'm going to transfer these guys to another bowl and I'm going to heat my leaves. And you can use your gloves for these. I've always used my hands. You've probably seen me do this before, but I'm going to show you how nice it is to have your gloves. Totally shrunk down. Drop it out. Pick it up. Keep it elongated and gently twist, elongated. Don't bend it up, bend it down, just keep it nice and elongated like an icicle. Twist. Keep it elongated. I just twisted it at about a quarter of a turn and then I let it cool like an icicle so that it makes a nice drop. So there we are, done with the shrinking. So here we are and I have my little layouts done. And these are two that I've done before and I want you to notice that I start with the drop and I work from small to large and then small again okay and I had the wax linen of which I cut in half so that I can string 
and I have two ways that I can string this. You've got jump rings in here. You do have um, uh, various sizes and you have some split jump rings. So what we're going to do is use the little four millimeter jump ring for this and we're going to open it up. This one's already quite opened and I'm going to slip my little guy on here. And then I'm going to make sure that that's really tight and snug because I do not want the Irish wax linen slipping out of it. So I'm coming down here and squeezing it at different angles, just gently. I squeezed it once. I'm going to hold this side over here and come in here at different angles and just, just gently squeeze it so that I don't break it, but I'm just bringing it together. Just gently squeezing it, just pressing those little guys together as best I can. I do not want that jump ring opening up. Next, I'm going to do something kind of fun. You can do this with a Sharpie marker, or you can do it with any color marker you want, but I, uh, or um, any color uh, ink marker, like a gold leafing or silver leafing. But I'm going to do it with a paint marker. I'm going to shake my paint marker up. I'm going to bring a scrap of paper over. And I'm going to make sure that my paint is flowing. I'm going to hold my little end like this. And I'm putting little fun marks on the edge of this. Now this is oil based, so this needs to dry. So you can do this at any time during the process, but we're going to let that dry and we're going to come back to it. Okay. So we're going to go over to this piece while this one dries. Take my Irish wax linen and this time I'm not going to put a jump ring on it. I'm just going to take the wax linen. I'm going to string my little leaf bead, find center, bring my two tips together, and now you get to try to scrape that off so it's not too distracting string it as I've laid it out. And because I'm using wax linen, I'm not using a needle because I can make the wax linen nice and stiff and twirl it together. This is, these are wonderful. They're um, silicone um, O-rings and I get those from Bead Me a Story, and they're in your kit. Now, we're here, okay? So what I have to do is line my hole up with my hole. And if I hold it up, I can see it if I look straight down with it, because notice how I can move the bead around so it will lose its line up. But if I look straight down at it, I can line it up with the hole. Then I want my wax linen really straight so that I can come right in there and get that strong. This is the one that I sprayed with the iridescent. I'm going to string that so that's on the top. 
and I'm coming in here with more beads coming on down. Keep twirling my wax linen together. I had two choices. I selected here either the spacer bead or the sequin. I decided to just go with the sequin and finish off with an O-ring. And then in your kit you're going to have leather and you're going to have silk. We'll be doing one with silk and one with leather. I'm going to do this one with leather. I'm dividing my leather in half and I'm going to just tie the wax linen on. Do a couple of knots on there. Don't tie, don't tie so tightly that you break the wax linen. But I always do three. And then even though the wax linen does hold it because of the wax in it, I will put a drop of super glue, or my favorite is the super new glue, and seal the, um, the knot. going to tie that and then to give that a more finished look I'm going to come in here and tie a knot on the top of that. Once again even with leather, leather is strong but be careful that you don't tug the heck out of it or you could break that too. So there we have our cute little pendant and without a jump ring, the little drop here will not swing as freely. When I get to doing this with the jump ring, you will see that we get more um, freedom to swing. And I like that look. But this one here, it saves us the worry of the wax linen coming out of the jump ring. So now I'm going to come in and show you how I do the tips on the leather. You'll want to put this around your neck to measure the length you want it. Um, I think this might be about where I want it. I'm going to cut these in diagonals. And then in your kit, you're going to have two end caps. I'm going to gather jump rings. One bigger, one little, and I'm going to put those on the ends of the cord terminators. And I'm coming in there and squeezing. Whoops, I forgot to do something important. I forgot to slip the lobster claw on. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Got that on there. And then the other side, um, if you want to use the two six millimeters, I used a four and a six, but it's easier to work with the six. This one is bigger, the six, I used it because it's the clasp in. There. 
Now what I'm going to do next is add a little glue and I'm going to adjust my chevrons a little bit, my diagonals and my chevrons, and I'm going to make them little points. And I can use E6000 for this, or I can use the super new glue, or, the, or super glue. Fill that little hole, and let's get that terminator in there. And I twist and I turn to stuff it in. So I'm going to cut two deeper chevrons and I'm going to do the same for the other side. Press it in there. And squeeze and turn and push. Get it nice and stuffed in there and I'm going to let those dry and we'll ha we have number, whoops, number one done. And then we're going to go on and hope that our glue, our black, is dry on this. I'm going to clean this up so I can get ready to string this second piece for you. So I have my second piece ready to string. And I am speeding up my process a little bit, but when using the, the, the paint markers, which are really fun to use, um, I usually like to let those dry for at least an hour. They just give it a really nice, glossy, high glossy look. Um, this one was done with Sharpie markers, and this one was done with paint markers. And you can kind of see the difference. The paint markers are just really strong. They're much more durable and lasting um, because they're oil-based paint, but you need to let them dry. We're kind of rushing it a little bit. So we've had our jump ring on. I'm going to be a little careful with it when I handle it. And I'm going to string that through. Now I won't have to touch it anymore. I'm going to find the center. So hopefully this will swing more. If it's, especially if I'd used a six millimeter jump ring, but I used a four millimeter so it'll swing less. The bigger the jump ring, the more it'll swing, but also the more visual space it takes up. So I chose four millimeter there. Once again, we're at the point of looking down, lining up our hole with our hole, getting our wax linen nice in a straight line so that we can come right down through there and string it. I'm going to flip this over and do the shiny on top. And there we have our second piece done. Now I'm coming in here with my silk ribbon. And this one I will just be tying on the same way. But with the silk, I'm not going to uh, put a clasp on it. I'm going to make it so that it can be tied in the back. So I'm coming in here. I'm tying this on 
three with a drop of the binder on there, the glue, and I have choices here. I can leave it just like so, or I can come in with a knot and pull that nice and tight and get myself a, a little finished um, knob look at the top. A little bit of the wax linen showing through there. And then the end of it can just be worn tied on. And you, then you get to make it go with um, any length uh, you want and neckline of top you have on. So there we are with our little electric reins. These are the ones I had done previously. We got a little tangle going up here. Get that untangled later. So you can do just about anything with them. And they're just lots of fun. Thanks for joining me.